morning, guys, gals, and I'm Binary Pals. It is Thursday morning, and I'm hoping for, but not exactly feeling, an energy shift <laughs> in the next few days. Like, the last, the last few days have honestly been exhausting not in a physical way but like exhausting on my soul and that sounds so dramatic and usually if i heard anybody else say that i'd be like really but yeah uh <laughs> i have to edit the last episode um but by the time you see this obviously it will already be up so i guess i'll post that link up here but yeah the last episode encompasses some really 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 stressful days so for you guys that would have been days ago for me it was literally last night so i'm still kind of reeling a little bit um still rubbing the sleep out of my eyes so one thing nothing to do with the stress i've been feeling the last few days but just something that i feel is definitely worth mentioning i've been saying for weeks probably since i mean yeah, I've been saying it since the restrictions started getting lifted, that the restrictions are getting lifted too soon in Florida, especially in the theme parks where it's a lot of, you know, it's a high traffic situation and you get people from literally all over the planet in this one place, talk about high risk for, you know, contamination. Um, it's a Petri dish, right? So when they started lifting mask mandates outdoors, I was like, Okay, I mean, sounds like a step in the right direction, but maybe feels too soon. And then almost immediately they were like, oh, and no masks indoors either. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all are getting a little too excited here. That does not sound like a good idea. And I don't know if they've officially announced that they were raising the cap on the amount of people in the park at any given time. I'm talking about Walt Disney World specifically. I know Disneyland has its own set of regulations because they're in California and California has taken this much more seriously than Florida has. Uh, spot the difference. Um, and Universal Studios Florida, well, Universal Studios generally has not made a statement yet. So whenever they do, I guess I'll let you guys know about that as if I'm your up to the minute source on theme park news. But by the time you see this, actually it will be days since they made the announcement. So surely if it's something that interests you, you would know this by now. Just telling you my thoughts on it. Um, so yeah, so they lifted all these restrictions. Like I said, they didn't actually say, oh, we're lifting the cap on the amount of people we let into the parks. But if you watch any Disney World vloggers lately or like follow any Instagram accounts, TikToks, whatever, the place looks packed constantly lately. Like sea of people, no clear paths to walk. Like you have to weave through crowds wherever you're going in any given park. It's packed, it's deed up like it's always, like, like this never happened. Well, last night, or was it yesterday? Yesterday or the day before, I think it was the day before because I remember telling my husband about it. The mayor of Orange County had declared a state of crisis. Um, I thought it was because as mayor, he can't declare a state of emergency, but apparently when you say a state of crisis, it's specified to like the hospital system. So that day that he made that announcement, there were 860 some odd cases of COVID at that local hospital. At the peak of COVID, there were 900 patients. So we're basically back at peak levels. I feel like lately there isn't really a vlog where my phone alarm doesn't go off. Um, so they're back at peak levels for COVID cases. They're also in a situation, which is what I guess that crisis category is for, where they're no longer allowing uh, visitors of any kind at hospitals and they're postponing any elective procedures. So they basically don't want anybody just at the hospital if they don't need to be because they need all of the space available and all of the personnel available just to deal with the COVID cases again. Okay, that's better. I put up the blind, I'm putting down the camera because my arm's starting to hurt already. I didn't expect to talk this much today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I always talk too much, I should know this by now. So yeah, so that all happened a couple days ago. And then yesterday he actually just declared a state of emergency. Again, this is the mayor of Orange County, which is where Walt Disney World is partially located because Disney World intercedes two different counties. That's how big it is. And um, as a result, I guess, of that, 
Remember, Florida, or DeSantis anyways, has declared that mandates are not legal. So no municipality, city, county can say you must wear masks. What they can do is say you we're strongly advising masks or we strongly recommend masks. Or they can do press conferences like um, Cava did yesterday, which is our local mayor, saying the CDC recommends that you all wear masks whether you're vaccinated or not. And what she did also is she made it so that all government agents or all government buildings so like courthouses department of whatever all of those buildings you must be masked to come inside regardless of your vaccine status so she is within the scope to do that but she can't say for example all businesses need to require masks that's up to the individual business she can't say if i catch you on the street without a mask you're getting arrested that's not legal in florida um all they can do is strongly recommend Based on that strong recommendation and the state of emergency that the Orange County mayor declared yesterday, Disney World has now said late last night, like I'm talking 10 p.m. last night, they announced that starting July 30th, which, yeah, you guys will be watching this after that. Starting July 30th, masks will be required indoors, no matter your vaccine status. So if you're going to a restaurant, if you're going to a bathroom, if you're going to any ride or any ride line, even if the ride is outdoors, they're considering that a venue, an indoor venue, and so you must be masked up. And again, that does not matter what your vaccine status is, masks are required, period. So um, I'm of two minds because on the one hand, I feel like that's a step in the right direction. Obviously, not generally speaking, because the fact that they're having to mandate masks again is because cases are going back up and that's terrible. But on the other hand, it's like, do y'all feel stupid yet? Like, why did you lift them in the first place? You wanted the money. You didn't care about how, like the health of anybody, especially the cast members, the poor cast members, because A, they've, you know, potentially been exposed to how many thousands of people daily from all over the planet that were just like chomping at the bit to come and bring their diseases and not have to wear masks because nobody was forcing them to. But now, they're going to have to deal with all of those same people and telling them, hey, listen, I know when you booked your trip, you were looking forward to this maskless utopia, but now they're required. So I'm sorry, but you're going to have to put it on. Do you know how many people are going to get yelled at and spit on like the abuse that these poor cast members are going to have to endure until everybody comes around and realizes like, listen, if you don't like masks, don't come again. There's, those are the ones I feel really bad for right now. But yeah, it's like, y'all were dumb as hell. Like, you shouldn't have rolled them back in the first place. That was a dumb move. Like, you were definitely, that was a money grab. Um, you were just excited for things to get back to normal. And I get it, but it was not the intelligent, responsible, safe, pertinent, mature thing to do. Regardless of what Death Santa said, you know that you're a potential hotspot with the amount of people that come in with the fact that people are coming from all over no matter what anybody else said you should have kept those restrictions in place it just makes the environment safer for everyone i'm not able to go back because my son won't wear a mask especially not for as long a time as he would need to if we were at disney world in order for me to feel safe for him and i'm still i'm okay with that because i wouldn't feel safe going there right now masks or not so if you're going, you should be able to feel like every precaution is being taken for you to feel safe. In the last few weeks, they're back to no distancing whatsoever, fill in all av available space, uh, filling every available row for rides. Um, like I said, no masks at all anywhere. So this is just the first fallback it's funny i i haven't mentioned her yet on this maybe i have mentioned her on this channel but nina at mermaid nina travels she is a travel agent that also has a disney or travel theme park focus channel and we're good pals so we talk pretty much daily and i was telling her just a few weeks ago how um we were discussing how she has a lot of footage from trips that she's taken fairly recently but that a lot of that footage has people wearing masks. And I guess some people don't like to see that. And I had told her, hold on to that footage though, because as a Floridian, I can pretty much assure you that soon mask footage is gonna be relevant again.
and here we are. I think we had that conversation like maybe two weeks ago, probably less than that. And here we are. By the way, if you're into Disney, specifically Disney, because she does a lot of Disney content, but travel content in general, theme park content in general, I'll post a link to her channel below because she's got so much good information. Anyways, over 10 minutes just to say hello to you guys. I'm gonna stop now. It's Thursday. We have two therapies scheduled this morning. This afternoon, we have nothing. So I'm going to edit the last episode and I'm also gonna edit the cookbook video that I meant to release tomorrow. So actually, yeah, if you're watching this and that cookbook video sounds interesting to you, I'm making Christmas in July <laughs> um, pumpkin turnovers and they turned out really, really good and the recipe is gluten-free and dairy-free and my standard American eating diet, standard American diet eating family, really loved them too. So I'll post that link up here. <sighs> Happy Thursday. Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. Um, today is a momentous occasion. I don't know how else to really describe it, but today makes five, 500 days that COVID has been officially a thing in America. Um, I would say it's 500 days of quarantine, but if you go way back, you might, of course, you might know that I've been doing this since the very beginning, uh, the daily vlogs, I mean. But if you go way, 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 way back to the very first one, actually, I'll post it up here. Why not? Um, my son and I had actually been at home already for a couple of weeks before Trump uh, actually came out and said, hey, guys, guess what? We have a problem, which was on March 15th, 2020. And that's day one right? That's what I'm counting as day one, because that was the same day that Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson went, oh yeah, we have it too. And that was also the day that the NBA said, oh, we're not doing a season at all this year because two of our players have it. And that, all of that news, my kiddo just walked in, as you can see, all that news uh, came out in a matter of like 15 minutes. I'm trying to make sure he's not in the shot and he's gone. So March 15th, 2020 is what I count as day one as far as this being day 500. But my son and I had been sick for basically all of 2020 up until that point. Um, we were just sh uh, sharing a cold back and forth and I tried to get tested for COVID. I could not because every urgent care I went to did not have a test. And back then it was so rare to have COVID that I had to basically prove that I had come in contact with somebody that already had it in order for them to test me. It's not that the COVID was so rare, it's that the tests were so rare. And how am I supposed to prove that someone I came in contact with had it when they can't get tested either? Yeah, so for all we know, we did have it. I don't think so, only because as far as I can tell, neither of us experienced any sort of after effects, but we were extremely, extremely sick for about two months. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We both got tested for flu, pneumonia, bronchitis, multiple times, and all of those tests always came back negative. And they would just tell me, especially at the children's urgent care, they would just tell me, he just has a really bad cold. Well, guess what? The common cold is called coronavirus. Coronavirus is a big umbrella. Um, all COVID is coronavirus and not all coronavirus is COVID. Point being, a really bad cold? Well, that's what COVID is when you rip it all right down to the base. So again, did we have it? I honestly don't know. We might never know because I know that even if we got an antibody test, the antibodies only last so long and it's been over 500 days if we did have it. I don't care either way. Um, taking precautions as if we haven't and taking precautions as if I never want to. But 500 days since COVID has been at the front of everybody's minds in the country, since lockdowns began, um, since life as we knew it forever changed. And it's kind of hard to wrap my brain around the fact that it's been 500 whole days because it simultaneously feels like this has gone on forever and like it can't possibly have been 500 days already. Um, maybe if you're in a similar situation, you might feel the same way. I know that most people that I know anyways are not still living their life as if it's day one. Um, we are. 
<laughs> I know most people have probably returned to their workplaces or returned to some semblance of what their routine was pre-COVID, um, especially with how things are going now in Florida. I'm not, and I don't know when I will be. So 500 days straight of this. Yeah, and like I said, I don't really know how, I, how to feel about it. Obviously, it's kind of, um, it's not good <laughs> because none of this is happening for a good reason, but I do feel like this lifestyle suits me as far as just being home all the time. Obviously, I would like the freedom to feel like I can go wherever I want, whenever I want, and I don't feel that right now, but being at home like this, leisurely breakfasts with my son, easing into the day of learning, um, having time to do things around the house and work on my own personal projects and have time to exercise and cook every meal and all of that, that's what I always imagined being a homeschooler would be like. And then with my son's diagnosis, it ended up not being that way because we have to go to so many appointments every day. So um, yeah, I, I feel good in this lifestyle. But the fact that I know that I'm here because of something terrible that happened in the world and is still going on in the world is obviously something that's hard to like um, reconcile, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So yeah, lots of complicated feelings today, but it is what it is, 500 days in our self-imposed lockdown, I guess at this point. It is Friday, we have two therapies scheduled today, they're later in the afternoon. So I'm doing my morning things. I'm printing and cutting my planner kit that I'm gonna use in this, uh, this week's upcoming plan with me. I have a video coming out later today because it's a collab, so it's coming out a little later than I usually post because I don't set times and dates for collabs uh, when I'm not hosting them anyway. And what else, what else, what else? I haven't eaten yet today. I should probably eat something. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what's happening right now. So I guess let's get started with our day. Happy Friday. I'm I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I wanted to, well I did, I placed a grocery order this morning and the only window available was two to four. And I thought, oh, we start therapy at 3.30, but I do have from two to 3.30. So scientifically or, or statistically speaking, it's, you know, three quarters of the time where they could come, I'm available. So there's a good shot that I won't just leave my grocery sitting out. Fine, two to four it is. It's about to be 3.30 and I just got an email saying that they've only just now left with my order and that it'll be at my house sometime before 4.30. So I'm gonna be in therapy when the groceries arrive and they're gonna just be sitting outside. Luckily, I don't know if you can tell by the lighting in here, but it's gloomy as hell, so at least they won't be sitting in the sun, but they're definitely not gonna be in the cold. So, huh. best laid plans, am I right? Hey friends, happy Saturday. I am pretty bummed this morning because I guess at some point through the night, my chain broke and um, the chain I found, but my locket is missing. And I looked on the bed, I looked under the bed, I like followed the path that I take from my room to the bathroom and back and unless it like fell in the hamper or something, I. I don't know. I don't know where it is. So I'm pretty upset about that because that was an anniversary present from my husband a few years ago. And as you might have noticed, I wear it literally every day. I wear it 24 hours a day. I don't take it off to sleep. I don't take it off to shower. I just have it on me all the time. So um, I was pretty upset this morning. And as of right now, I still don't know where it is. So. That sucks. Hopefully we run into it at some point, but all efforts thus far have proven zilch. So it is Saturday. I have a lot of videos. I actually, I'm gonna just whoop, real fast. So that's my to-do list for the day. Um, that's my to-do list for the weekend actually. I've created many spreadsheets. I'm gonna open an Etsy store one day, I think for other people that are as obsessive as I am. But I have like a spreadsheet for uh, weekdays, I have a spreadsheet for weekends, I have a spreadsheet for weekdays where I don't have appointments necessarily, it's just these things have to happen at some point today. And then of course I have my planners, all, all of the things. But I color code <laughs> everything, of course I do. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine videos. 
that I'm hoping to record at least in part today. Or I shouldn't say nine videos because like, for example, two of the things are for one video. Actually, that's it. <laughs> so eight videos, I guess, um, that I'm hoping to record at least in part today. And uh, one, two, three, four of those eight are ones that I had already recorded, but that I lost when my SD card corrupted last week. So I'm also thinking that like, I don't want to just record straight through, which is what I typically do and what makes sense for me because I mean, once you're on a roll, you don't want to lose that momentum, right? But thinking that the smart, responsible, prudent thing to do now would be that like, maybe I'll record a video and then I will unload the memory card and then I can record the next one and unload the memory card, which is a huge pain in the butt. It's gonna definitely take me out of my flow. Um, that's not a quick thing to do, but I think I'd rather do that than risk recording eight or nine videos or, or even just eight or nine segments and then, oh, lost everything all over again. So that's kind of my mission for today because I'm hoping that just like last weekend, even though you guys didn't get to see last weekend because of the aforementioned card, last weekend I spent all of Saturday recording and all of Sunday tidying up, decluttering, etc. And that's usually my plan, but I just never stick to it. I happened to stick to it the one weekend that um, I wasn't able to show you guys, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, that's hopefully that works out as well today. And also hopefully I find my locket because that has me really distressed. Like I keep thinking about other things and trying to distract myself, but I keep coming back to like, oh, I wonder where my locket is. I hope it didn't get flushed or something like, cause what if, what if it was in my shirt or something when I went to the bathroom and it just fell out? Anything could have happened, honestly. Like I honestly don't know. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's going on this morning. Happy Saturday. Hey friends, uh, Saturday update. I've done a little bit of everything that I meant to do today, but I haven't actually finished anything that I set out to do today. So um, as the youngins would say, I'm back on my... Yeah. Um, what else? Speaking of, I just got a breaking news tweet on my phone from my local news station that apparently today there were over 21,000 confirmed daily cases of COVID in the state, okay? So what does that mean? That means it's the highest number literally ever, even day one of the pandemic, day 30 of the pandemic, a year into the pandemic, we never once had a number as high as over 21,000 brand new cases in the state in one day. So. <sighs> now I'm just gonna speak for Florida, although I know that it's very obvious and common knowledge at this point that all of this has been fumbled in a hardcore way by the government all the way up to the top and has been the whole time, regardless of who's been in power. But uh, I know that in Florida, Death Santis, who continues to remain firm on everybody having a choice about masks and um, it being up to the parents whether kids wear masks when the school year begins, even though the CDC recommends that everybody continue to wear masks indoors in schools, whether they're vaccinated or not. Well, <laughs> they rolled back the mask mandate way too fast. Again, I'm going to choose to speak only for Florida, but I know that nationwide, Biden, the CDC, etc. I said it then too, the optics were more important than the data people's lives were not as important as looking like things were on the up and up. So when people started to get vaccinated, that's great. But until that threshold needed for herd immunity, which I think is 70%, if I'm not mistaken, is what they were aiming for. They said if 70% of the population gets uh, vaccinated, then we're in good shape. What should have happened then is that when 70% of the population had been vaccinated, then and only then should mask mandates had have started to be removed or backed down on. Um, 
<laughs> because here's the thing is that when they said, oh, well now if you're vaccinated, you can stop wearing a mask. Again, this is not news. I said it back then too. What happens then is they're trying to make it so that people go, oh, well, that's a groovy reward. I'll go out and get vaccinated so that I don't have to wear a mask anymore. But most people just saw that as cool. If everybody's unmasking, I'm going to unmask also. And let's face it, the people that were most in a rush to get rid of the masks were the people that never wanted to wear them in the first place, didn't think they were doing anything to help themselves or others, were only wearing them because they were being told to. So everybody rushed to take their masks off, vaccinated or not, and now we're here. And yes, most cases are people that are not vaccinated, but they did find, and here's, I'll put another screen cap in if I could find it, because I took one yesterday. People that are vaccinated are catching Delta just as they would if they weren't vaccinated. They're transmitting it just as they would if they weren't vaccinated. That's the other problem, is that first you have people that are not vaccinating and not masking because I understand either or, but doing neither, why? And then you have people that got vaccinated and suddenly think, oh, well, I'm good, I'm immune, I'm 100% protected, I'm gonna go out and do what I want, where I want, with as many people as I want. And that was never the case, that's not how vaccines work. Vaccines protect you from catching it, if you catch it, and this is not just for COVID, this is for all vaccines, this is how all vaccines work. They help you prevent catching that disease. And if you do catch it, they help to ease your, your symptoms. But being immunized, that's not, or immunizations, whatever. I don't know why they even call them that because vaccines do not make you 100% immune to anything. For any, no matter what the disease, no matter what the vaccine, they have never ever been 100% effective and they've never claimed to be. People think that, people think that, oh, well, I got vaccinated, so I'm 100% safe. Literally no science, the vaccines themselves, nobody says that. You still have to take precautions. And unfortunately, people were under the impression that by being vaccinated, they could go out and do what they wanted. And I'm not saying that they're as much at fault for, for what's going on right now as the people that have just never given a crap to protect themselves at all, but certainly that plays a part. Point is, this has been manhandled from the jump. We all knew it, and now, we're not only back to where we started, but, and then some, you know what I mean? So, <sighs> I don't even know. <laughs> I'm still trying to process and still trying to come up with like words. I don't know when I zoomed into myself, but there you go. Um, so that's, that's all I can tell you for certain is that they just broke a report today that we have the highest number of cases today that we've ever had period, with or without a vaccine, with or without anything, just the highest number ever in Florida, didn't happen a year ago, didn't happen, it happened today. And that's just today, who knows what it'll be tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. Really, I wasn't gonna eat anymore. <laughs> Te gusto? It's really good, honey. <laughs> a truck no an ambulancia look at that from this angle it just looks like a truck but from the other side you can tell it's an ambulance yeah Hey there friends, happy Sunday. I have some very good news and some very bad news. The very good news is that my husband found my locket, um, apparently in a place that I'd already looked three times, but I don't know how I missed it and whatever. Point is that it's found, thank goodness. I cried happy tears, such a relief. I was so worried that it was gonna end up in the laundry or something and I was never gonna see it again. It would like get caught in the washing machine or I don't know, but it's found. The bad news, <laughs> the bad news is that I've had a pain in my upper back. I think it's um, musculo montado. I'm not sure how you say that in English. Maybe a knot, but it sounds so much like, it sounds so much more chill in English. Point is I've got a very hard mass on my upper back, my right, but like right next to my spine. And I've had it since um, last, Saturday, last Sunday. It's been a week. It's been at least a week at this point. 
and it um it bothers me to varying degrees but last night for whatever reason it got to a point where i just i didn't know i didn't know what to do with myself standing hurts sitting hurts um laying down hurts laying down on my stomach is like the one thing that gives me some relief but only for a, a, a short span of time and um i'm just extremely extremely uncomfortable to the point that I feel like I'm on the verge of a panic attack constantly because I, I just literally don't know. Right now, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know how to how to ponerme so that I don't feel like absolute garbage. So this, this very flattering angle is what's gonna happen right now. But um, this morning, I have to bake for a video and I have to do my plan with me still. Every other video that I had planned I can't because I can't sit up for long periods. Hell, I can't stand or lay down for long periods. So I literally don't know what to do with myself. Um, are, are my son's bed sheets super cute, by the way? But um, yeah, as it is this morning, I already have had two Advil, which I don't take painkillers ever. Um, I try not to anyways, but I had two this morning, which even when I do take them, I only ever take one at a time. And I'm wearing two icy hot patches right now. I took an Epsom salt bath and even all of that combined is like, it's tolerable, but I'm not pain free and I'm not, uncom I'm not comfortable. So I don't know <laughs> what's going to have to happen, what it's going to take to feel better. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know, but I'm not feeling my best, and I don't know what else to do at this point. Did I mention that I got my period today, too? Yeah, but that's the least of my worries right now, honestly, which is saying something, because typically days one and two are like, okay, doubled over, can't do much, um, just a ball of tears and pain, but even that is not even registering right now, because my back is taking up so much of my, my bandwidth. So I'm going to try my best to at least do the plan with me. If I'm able to suck it up to do the baking, then I'll do the baking as well. If not, then unfortunately that's a video that's not going to come out this week. And that just is what it is. But um, yeah, mostly I just wish I knew what else to try or what else to do because it's been a week of this and it's not getting any better. In fact, it's only getting worse. So... That's what's going on with me today. Happy Sunday. All right, friends, it's Sunday. I'm wrapping up the vlog. I did not accomplish most of the things that I had on my to-do list this weekend. I actually ended up taking three Advil total today. Um, took that up some salt bath. I wore two icy hot patches. I still smell, thank you door, I still smell like old man. And I've been beating the crap out of myself with this super high powered back massager thing that feels like it might tear your skin off while it's working it's quite intense but it has been i think probably the most effective thing in like loosening whatever knot i have back there so i'm not feeling 100 percent better by any means but i am feeling much better right now then again i am still medicated so i guess i'll let y'all know in the morning what's going on which will be a whole other video for you guys so um yeah Tomorrow's another day, I guess, the beginning of another week. The cases just keep piling up. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I hope that they at least make virtual school an option again for public school students. We're, we're homeschoolers either way, so that doesn't directly affect us, but I'm just thinking of like my nephews how much safer they'd be, and especially my brand new baby nephew, if um, 
they get this thing under control, man. I mean, I was even having a conversation today with, we have like a giant group chat for the family. And my family runs the gamut from the leftiest of left to the rightiest of right. And there's a lot of things that we just, out of courtesy, at this point in our lives, because it didn't used to be this way, but at this point in our lives, we're all grown enough and mature enough that we try not to talk about certain things with each other because there's just no point. It's just going to go sour and there's no need. But we were having a conversation today because one of my cousins has a friend that was in his 20s, father of three, otherwise completely healthy, and he just died of COVID today. And, um, you know, there's something that we all agree on, and it's that vaccinated or not, people just need to take responsibility for themselves and continue to mask up, continue to social distance. And <laughs> unfortunately, you can't just go by what the government's saying. It, it just is what it is. Like, the government's been... I'm not one to shy away from <laughs> putting Biden in his place. I think you all know that by now. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on or what side of the aisle I'm on. I've always tried to call it like I see it. And Biden did say he wouldn't do anything if he got elected and, and he's come through so far. But Biden was in such a rush to declare victory over COVID that he didn't actually do anything to make sure that we would win. And I think that that is one part of a big problem that the government from city level to county level to state to federal, every bit, every part of government has fumbled the response to COVID. And you almost want to be like, well, I mean, this has never happened before. How could they know what to do? But even in cases where it was so obvious what had to happen, they put optics and money and profits and corporations over the obvious thing to do to keep the people safe. Um, case in point, apparently the eviction moratorium is up, I think already, if not at the end of this next month, but I know that it's up and Congress isn't even in session to do anything about it. So COVID is ramping back up worse than ever before and people are potentially going to lose their homes uh, because they can't work, they'll have no place to go, and the government is just sitting on their hands and not doing anything about it. And it's a purely democratic Congress, House, Senate, Presidency, everything. So they can't blame Trump for this one. So it's just, it feels very hopeless because nobody's looking out for the people. And so the people have to look out for themselves. But that means trusting people to do the right thing. And unfortunately, generally, people are kind of crap. Whatever. I'm obviously all in my feelings today. So I'm going to let y'all go before I keep tripping on my tongue. Hopefully you're all well and staying safe. Let me know how things are looking in your neck of the woods. So now that you guys know how things are looking over here. And um, hopefully... Feels like we've been saying this for, well, we have been saying it for months. Hopefully we get out of this soon. What else are we gonna do? I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed at least parts of it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give the video a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.